Hello everyone. So today's film is going to be a brand and product focus film where I try out and trial out and test out certain products by a certain brand. And the brand that I'm going to be focusing on today and trialing out some of their products, it isn't necessarily a new brand, but certainly in cosmetics it's definitely new. And it is Crayola. Crayola are very famous and notable for their crayons and for their art materials. Very very, very famous for that and certainly I can regard when I was a lot younger I certainly enjoyed using some of their crayons in the past I was certainly able to actualize some of my creative visions using some of their crayons but Crayola has recently launched many makeup products and I have some of them here for you today now I didn't actually know about this until yesterday as I was quite unsure what to film and produce for this episode so I went on to www.twitter.com which I am very fond of and I reached out to all of my very seamless friends and I asked what kind of film would you like me to produce next? And somebody said, you should try out the Crayola makeup. And I thought, this is an odd one. So I researched it immediately and I saw that www.asos.com was a retailer. In fact, I live very near the ASS headquarters. Their headquarters is based here in London in a rather unusual building. I always say it looks like some sort of oversized mosque. They're certainly the retailer of Crayola in the United Kingdom. So I of course went on to ASOS and I saw all these different rather exciting interesting products that Crayola Beauty have recently launched. There are many of them. I selected several of them and purchased them and they arrived just this morning, just in time for this brand and product focus film. And I purchased three products from Crayola Beauty. The first, the largest box, is an eyeshadow palette. The secondary box, which is in black packaging, is a mascara, as I wanted to try a new mascara. And the third box is a lip and cheek crayon. Of course, the box has been decorated with the applicable shade of the lipstick within. But first of all, we are going to examine the Crayola Beauty Nude Eyeshadow Palette. And this is its packaging, very bright and colorful, just like the rest of Crayola and it has their logo Crayola Beauty just on the front and the ingredients and further information on the back. If one is to open it up and encourage aggression from its packaging, this is what the palette looks like. It is white, it is plastic, and it has the classic Crayola branding on it. And of course, if I turn it to the back, there is additional information. It has a little click lid, so you just have to push that up. And once you open it, these are the colors. It also comes with a very large mirror. Most of these tones are shimmery from what I am able to perceive. There are only three matte tones within the palette, and they're all quite simple and quite pretty. So we're going to have a play with that. And all these tones are quite neutral and quite pretty. A lot of them are quite warm as well, so very suiting for my eye colour. There doesn't appear to be any names for these individual eyeshadows, so I shall be describing them as I go along. The next product for which that I purchased from Crayola Beauty is the mascara in the shade Black. Once you open up the box and slide it out, this is what the mascara looks like. It actually feels just like the Crayola pens. I mean, I wouldn't say that the plastic is the most expensive plastic. It doesn't necessarily feel like expensive plastic, but it definitely feels like the old pens that Crayola used to do. There's definitely an essence of nostalgia. So this is what it looks like. It comes in white packaging. Of course, all the ingredients and the further information is on the box it comes in. And if I open it up, you can see this is what the wand looks like. So it's quite a simple wand and I actually like mascara wands to be quite simple. I don't like them to be too complex or too large. So this will definitely be interesting to try out. And I would say that this mascara packaging is quite narrow. It does actually feel like a pen, like I could go and write with it. And I definitely think that's the theme for much of their packaging. And the third product for which that I purchased from Crayola Beauty is this lip and cheek crayon in the shade Foozy Woozy. And when you take it out of its packaging, this is what it looks like. I trust this is an emollient cream product and it has a little plastic lid and once you pull that off, this is what it looks like. So it appears very much like one of the Crayola crayons and it has this swivel at the bottom. So as you use it, you can swivel it up to access more product. And I shall be using this on my lips today. Now, before I go in and apply any of the products, I have already gone in and applied color corrector 
foundation, setting powder, as well as eyebrows, and a little bit of chapstick to the lips. I went in first of all to freshly shaven bare skin with some of Bobbi Brown's Vitamin Enriched Face Base. For concealer, I used Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W. For foundation, I took some of Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation in the shade 02. I had actually forgotten about this foundation. I haven't worn this foundation in a very long time. For additional coverage in areas most horrendous, I applied some of MAC Cosmetics Full Coverage Foundation in the shade W10. And to set everything into place, I took some of MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shades Shivering White, which is the white, and NW10, which is this flesh tone. For eyebrows, I took some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40 and sketched in and drew the stencil for the eyebrows with that, using some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete. Now, I have absolutely nothing on my eyelids currently. I have no primer, I have nothing on them. So I'm going to go in with the eyeshadows first of all. And I shall be taking this very matte tone at the very furthest left hand side of the palette, first of all, just to sculpt through the eye. And I'm just applying that to the socket, first of all, on a MAC 217. I'm not going to be creating a very dramatic eye look today, or very dramatic makeup in general, as I have a meeting later today and I want to look most presentable. And I do tend to find that when trialing out new products, it can be quite best to trial them out. Of course, I trial out products within my actual professional work and of course on myself. So I very much judge a product from three points of view, consumer, collector and professional. So I'm able to get a really good grasp on how well a product performs in its different categories. Some products perform fantastically for different people, for different purposes, and for different looks, of course. For most things in life, but certainly when it comes to cosmetics, I do not believe that one shoe fits all. Just softening that with a clean 217. I'm going to go in with additional color. Now, I'm actually finding it quite easy to build up in small layers with this, and it is relatively easy to blend. This is just one matte tone, however. I haven't actually tried any of the shimmer tones yet, so we shall see. And with the same eyeshadow, I'm applying that to the underneath and connecting it round into the socket using a Charles Fox 814631 brush. Now I'm going to move to this slightly more warm tone. I'd say it's just a fraction darker, but considerably more warm. So I'm going to be taking that through the socket now and applying that on top of what we have already applied, simply strengthening our socket. I'm just applying that through the sockets. I'm not going to apply it too much everywhere. And I'm applying that warmer tone on the same MAC 217 for which that I used to apply the earlier tone. And then with our Charles Fox 8146031 brush from before, I'm simply applying that warmer tone to the underneath of the eye. Now, I wouldn't say that these shadows are patchy, but I do think they struggle to grab to my very dry eyelids. So I definitely think maybe going in with a cream product or maybe using a tiny bit of a moisturizer over the eyes or a primer, an eye primer, or even a MAC paint pot would be quite good before going in with these shadows. I wouldn't say that this formulation is patchy, but certainly on me, it is slightly struggling to grab. So I am applying quite a good amount of it. And I do tend to find that with eyeshadows that are either struggling to grab on certainly with eyeshadows that are patchy, one trick that you can use is by applying a good bit of product to the tip of the brush. So what I mean by that is get it on the brush, on the end of the brush, and you simply stipple it on, first of all, to get your color intensity. And this is a great way of ensuring that the surface for which that you are coloring is Colored. And then going in with a clean 217 and just blending all of those edges just so that we can ensure seamlessness. But I would say that these two shades here are very much the same depth, but one is warm toned and one is cool toned. I'm now going to go in with this color right here, which is a, I would say it's a bronze, but it's certainly a very golden bronze, almost like a coppery brass antique bronze. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to apply that to the eye using a MAC 239 brush. Now, one fantastic way of avoiding fall down, and what I mean by fall down is when you apply eyeshadow and it starts to drop onto the rest of the cheek. One method that I use is by taking one of these fabulous magnified mirrors. This one is by Revlon. And as you can see, it just magnifies everything. Thing. So you're able to see everything very close up. And what I like to do when applying metallic shades, especially when I'm applying them dry to the eyelid, the method that I use to prevent this is to actually apply it looking down. So I tilt my head down and then I take my mirror and I close my eyelid and I press it onto the eyelid. And by doing it with this method, we are preventing 
fall down, as any eyeshadow that will fall will fall away. It won't fall onto the rest of the face. I'm just going to blend the edges of that. And for greater color intensity, I'm just applying some of that on my finger and pressing it onto the eyelid. Now in the palette, there's this absolutely beautiful metallic, very reddish burnt brick metallic shade. And I'm going to take a slight amount of that and pop it on the center of the lid. Not too much, just a tiny amount of it. Just using the same 239 for which that I used before. And using the same looking down technique, and I'm just patting it on. Then I'm going to be taking this absolutely beautiful yellowy gold metallic shade. I'd actually describe this shade as being quite similar to the Balm's Mary Luminizer, but not as yellow or as golden, just a little bit more muted. And I'm going to be applying some of this metallic shade to the inner corners, just to brighten the area. And I'm applying it with an Inglot 80 HPS brush. I'm just taking it a little bit along the underneath just to add a bit of light to that region. And just blending it upward onto the eyelid just ever so slightly. With eyeshadow application more or less complete, I am now going to go in and curl my eyelashes using some of Inglot eyelash curlers. Now I'm going to go in with the Crayola mascara in the shade black. I don't believe it has been scented, but it definitely smells like mascara. I'm going to work that into the eyelashes first of all, blackening the eyelashes. I actually quite like this mascara so far. It isn't too clumpy, it isn't too bulky. I would say it's quite buildable. I would definitely say it's more of an everyday mascara. I wouldn't say that you can get really clumpy, intense, black looking mascara, which is what I typically wear. But I actually really like this. It feels quite light on the eyelashes. I don't feel myself having a reaction to it. I do tend to react quite to quite a lot of mascaras, but this one feels very light. And I'm just applying a little bit of that to my lower lashes using a MAC Cosmetics lash brush. Now for cheeks, I'm actually going to go back into our nude eyeshadow palette. And I'm going to be going back to our original color, which is this first color right here. This will be absolutely perfect on my skin tone for contouring, as it's quite an ashy cool tone, but it's not too cool and it's not too warm. It is slightly more on the warm side though. And I'm just applying that first of all, very, very softly and lightly with an Inglot 3.8 SS brush. I'm just stippling it all on first of all. When applied, it certainly looks a lot warmer on the cheek than it did in the pen. I'm now going to go in with a go-to product of mine for a blusher, which is MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Blush Baby. And I'm just using the same brush to stipple that on with, just to warm the cheek up. The planet quite high as well. For highlighter, I'm going to be going into the very pale pinky shimmer tone. It's only slightly pink, but it is a very, very pale, absolutely beautiful shimmer tone. And I'm applying that with a Zova 114. It's actually a lot more pearlescent than I thought. Certainly when applied to the skin, it appears a lot more pearlescent than it does in the actual eyeshadow palette. I'm just taking a little bit of that underneath the brow, the highest point of the cheekbone, a little bit of it to the bridge of the nose. Some of it just on the forehead and a little bit of it on the chin. Now moving on to lips, I've just removed the chapstick and the foundation for which that was on my lips remaining. I'm now going to go in with the Crayola Beauty Lip and Cheek Crayon in the shade Wuzzy Wuzzy. Now because this has come pointed, I'm actually going to use this to line my lips today and then I will go in with a lip pencil just to neaten up the shape and any asymmetry. But first of all, I'm just going to apply that to the lips directly. There's an absolutely beautiful smell of this. It is heavily scented with a very feminine scent. This fuzzy wuzzy color is actually a very close color to my own natural lip color. Now, I absolutely love the color. I also absolutely love this formulation. It's very light, it feels very smooth. It's very emollient, yet it looks quite matte. It doesn't look too shiny. To even out the shape and correct any asymmetry within the lips, I'm now going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics Lip Pencil in the shade Boldly Bare. I'm just correcting the lips. So that more or less completes my brand and product focus film featuring Crayola Beauty. I quite enjoyed working with the nude eyeshadow palette. I absolutely love the color range. I definitely think that there is something suitable for everybody in it. I don't necessarily think that the overall palette would work for the very deepest of skin tones, but definitely the shimmer shades in this are all perfect for all skin tones. I definitely think that each shimmer shade within this would look marvelous on the eyes or as a highlighter on all skin tones. So there's definitely something in there for all skin tones. However, I think with the matte shades, they are more light. I think the overall palette is more designed to be sparkly and shimmery. I definitely like the formula of both formulations, the shimmer formulas as well as the matte formulas. I do tend to have more dry eyelids. I of course went in and applied these eyeshadows on dry bare eyelids with no primer or anything on them 
whatsoever. I think if I were to use this palette again, I might put down an eye primer, just so that they're able to grab a little bit better. But of course, products are subjective to absolutely everyone. The Crayola Beauty Mascara in the shade Black. I absolutely love the simplicity of this. I like the packaging, even though it is made with slightly more affordable plastics. I definitely like how thin it is. I like how functional it is and I also like the applicator and the wand. The formulation of the mascara I definitely think is something that is more natural. It's a mascara that I don't think that you can build up. It's definitely a mascara that I think is more suited for softer makeup. I think it's more suitable for every day or if you just want your eyelashes to be blackened. But I wouldn't say it's a mascara that you can really layer and layer and layer and layer until you have massive looking eyelashes. I think it is marvellous for just blackening the eyelashes. And it definitely feels quite soft. I wouldn't say that it's clumpy or dry or heavy on the eyelashes. It's very soft on the eyelashes. It doesn't have much of a presence and it doesn't feel drying at all. And lastly, the Crayola Beauty Lip and Cheek Crayon in the shade Fuzzy Wuzzy. I absolutely love this. I love the colour. It's quite close to my own natural lips. It's a little bit more berry toned, a little bit more mauveish, a little bit more nude. I know I'm going through all the colours, but it's definitely very similar to my natural lips, just a little bit more on the nude, mauve, berry side of things to my own natural lips and a little browner. I would actually describe this as being quite similar to MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Modesty. They are quite similar. I would say that this is a little bit more muted. It's a little softer in colour. It is also quite similar to the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk. It's similar in shade. I absolutely love this formulation. I love the product. I think the packaging is quite interesting. It definitely is incumbent with the rest of Crayola's packaging. But I absolutely love the colour, I love the formula, it's quite light, it doesn't feel very heavy on the lips. I'd actually describe this formula as being a semi-matte formula and it feels very light on the lips. I think this lip product could potentially be one of my new marvellous finds. So that more or less completes my brand and product focus film on Crayola Beauty. I have had a lot of fun creating this film for you here today and of course trying out Crayola Beauty and trying their new products and of course the brand is new even though Crayola has been on the go for a great time. It's definitely interesting to try out all of these products and I had a lot of fun doing so. And I of course shall take the liberty to wish Crayola Beauty the best of luck with their new range, with their growth and with product development. It shall definitely be interesting to see what they come up with and come out with next. I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching and of course, take care. Bye!